let's go to our pie charm i created a package called visual tests i'm going to keep all my visual tests in this package i created a file test landing page visual and i have this example test test visual landing where i go on the page and i'm asserting that i can see the header celebrating beauty so that it's visible so let's go ahead and install one package i'm going to open preferences uh, python interpreter click on add package and start typing pytest dash playwright and uh, here it is pytest playwright visual and install this uh, package so you can do either from preferences or if you're not using pycharm of course you can do it uh, through the terminal we can just type pip install pytest playwright visual and we're going to install this okay great so looking at the uh, documentation here we see that we need to pass in this assert snapshot fixture and this is what we're going to do also of course very important you have to have pytest installed already and pytest playwright otherwise this fixture is not going to work this is the whole purpose of fixture it's part of the pytest test suite so I'm going to insert here, assert snapshot, and let's explore the API. So I'm going to type assert snapshot, and inside you type page.screenshot. That's it. You don't have to do anything else. It's going to create the snapshot name on the fly automatically. So um, I'm going to run only visual tests here. Let me cd to visual tests. And now I'm going to type pytest. Okay, and watch closely what is going to happen here. It's going to create a new folder called snapshot, and the snapshot of this test is going to be stored there. The first time you run it, it's going to fail always, which is expected, and it should be that way because you don't want to grab snapshots and just assume they display the correct image, right? What if it's just a white screen? And this is not what you're expecting, right? You have to go and manually validate all these screenshots. Okay, now we can see that snapshot folder was created. Inside the snapshot folder, you will notice another folder that has the same name as test file. Inside that folder, you have another folder that bears name of tests. So you have several tests, it's going to be several nested folders in here. Same for files, it's going to be several folders inside the snapshot folder. So this is very e easy to distinguish and review all your snapshots. Let's see what's here. All right, great. It grabbed the screenshot of the homepage. And as you can see, it created name automatically, which is the test name. And then inside the square brackets, we have the browser, which is Chromium by default, and Darwin uh, operating system, which is Mac OS. If you're on Windows, it's going to be Windows, uh, Ubuntu on the Linux, and so on. Okay great so let's make it let's run it again and see if it passes all right i'm running it headlessly just faster that way all right it passed everything's great but what if it fails i'm going to go to different url i'm going to go to the shop page and run it again so now this new page this is the shop page let me confirm. Yeah, this is it. It's going to be compared against this home page. And as you see, there are a lot of differences, right? And locator expected to be visible. Yes, of course, because I'm not seeing this header on the shop page anymore. Let me rerun this test. And what is going to happen now, we'll see snapshot test failures folder created with pretty much very similar folder structure. We'll have test name will have a test name and then three images inside expected actual and then the differences highlighted uh, what was different between the two when there is a lot of uh, differences it's going to take some time to generate this difference folder let's wait a little bit it's working on that sometimes you can just reload from the disk okay great snapshot test failures this folder created only during the failures and this is the uh, test file folder name and another is uh, 
test name with the browser and the operating system and let's review this is the actual this is what we got during the test these are the differences quite a lot and this was the expected which we took in our first run this is the home page okay if you want to update your snapshots you can just type pytest dash dash update snapshots and run it again snapshots updated and please review the images so the test failures folder with the test name is going to be deleted right because we just updated the screenshot let's go inside the snapshot let's review it yep now we have a sharp page as our golden standard as our um, snapshot to reference against all right what we can do now as well is add some extra tests because why not let's see let's explore this folder structure and i'm going to just put two in here uh, we can just keep the same screenshot i guess and we can also create a new test file right and this is visual 2 let me just add some naming conventions here for the tests to underscore one to underscore two so it's easier to distinguish and besides uh, doing it only in the chromium browser you can also use all three available browsers that we have for chromium and webkit so let's add webkit here let's add browser firefox let's just run it great we get these error messages new snapshots please review the images okay all right so visual ending as you can see we have this test name chromium we have firefox and we have webkit they should be pretty much all the same okay awesome and as you remember this folder has uh, the same name as the test file so inside this test file we have two tests landing and landing 2 let's just go and confirm let's open the landing 2 and we have firefox and webkit snapshots which is what we wanted we'll open another folder nested on the snapshots which is test file we have the same story here visual landing 2 underscore 1 2 underscore 2 and it will have firefox and webkit browser images okay let's talk about how we can mask some dynamic elements on the page so that your visual tests are not failing every time something changes some of the examples a profile username items in the shopping cart it could even be advertisement banners on your page you can all mask those right and have very consistent visual testing suite okay let's go and see how we can do this so inside a search snapshot method and inside the screenshot method start typing mask equal and uh, mask is always list so open close square brackets and all you need to do is pass in the element of the page so i'm going to put home page and i think it's a cart icon okay great so i'm going to run this test and it is expecting to fail because in this reference snapshot I have zero but I will have it mask and you will see in a second so I'm waiting for snapshot test failures let me reload this folder okay great here it is everything's right visual testing yeah this is the one that failed the actual result as you can see it highlights this whole block in pink difference is we can see here all right if you have several items on the page that you need to mask right this is what you do because it's a list you just list items inside here so i'm going to mask something like i don't know shop women menu item because well why not and uh, just for example purposes so i'm masking this item and the shopping cart 
Okay, snapshots do not match. We have our test results refreshed. And here we go. We have two items masked in pink and tests are failing. Awesome, cool. In case you don't want your image comparison being too strict, you can pass in threshold parameter that belongs to assert snapshot method. Okay, so make sure you place it directly after this parenthesis, put comma and uh, type threshold equals, and I'm going to put maximum, which is one. It is 0 0.1 by default and one is maximal. I'm going to run it again. So as you can see, I'm masking two items here, cart icon and then sharp women menu item. And uh, the reference image is without any masking. And let's see what's going to happen. All right, as you can see, both of these tests passed. We only had one test which was supposed to fail, but because we increased threshold, it didn't fail. Let's see how we can grab a full page screenshot. For this, we're going to use full page attribute inside the screenshot method, and I'm going to set it as true. We have these snapshots already. And what I'm going to do is probably just delete this folder. It will generate a brand new one and run the test. Okay, it failed, which is expected. We have them generated. This is the first test and let's review it. All right, great. It showed this full page and not like before, just some certain viewport. Let's make it uh, fail now. I'm going to remove this second mask, just leave one masked element and I'm going to run the test again. All right, snapshots do not match. Let's review this. Going to wait a little bit. Maybe I'll just reload. Great, okay. So this is what we have. This is actual and the difference is of course that unmasked shop women menu item all right so let's look at uh, how long did it take uh, to fail so 12 seconds there is another option that we can use if uh, we deal with big pages and generating differences is uh, sometimes taking quite a while we can pass in a fail fast option so let's remember full page is option for the screenshot method and the one I'm going to use right now fail fast belongs to a sort snapshot and I'm going to set it true as well and let's run again and we'll just compare the time so 12 seconds this time and uh, it should be way faster this second run as you can see six seconds it's quite considerate if you have uh, dozens of visual tests it's going to save you a lot of time so what it does is actually once it sees the first different pixel it's going to throw an error right so it's very very strict as you can see it came across that box next to shop women menu item and it failed immediately so this is another argument uh, another option in your visual tests that you can use